What's up, guys? How y'all doing? Wait a minute, what about the girls? I'm pretty sure there's none. Okay. Pretty sure it's just us guys. A snossage fest. <laughs> Okay guys, here we are, here's our book. We're not gonna write today though. We're not gonna talk about the lore and stuff. What we are gonna talk about is time. Time and writing. Let's see what happens. I have been taking a little bit of a back seat on uh, the book stuff. Uh, just. I don't know. Some, I don't know how to explain it. It's just like in the moments, you feel it. I don't plan it. I just do as the day tells me, and I just haven't been feeling that compulsion. Instead, I've been quietly feeling the. I kind of look at it like um, I'll watch things, and it fills my imagination energies, or I'll read things, or whatever. Like I'm just recharging myself. Before I go into the book once again, I feel like we've kind of depleted a lot of our resources on this first write through, so I'm taking a bit of a break. Ooh, I'm gathering information and I'm gathering experience and thought so I can kind of take that and move it forward. And and taking breaks like this allows your mind to just get find a calmness and if it if it's mattering if it's serious or if it's something that needs discussion or that needs mention it will come as it's supposed to you know it's it's like don't write something right after you've done like scanning through a bunch of things and your mind is going crazy with all this information like don't do it then let all that come down like your engine let the rpms come down until it's at a good idle then you can use whatever sticks out to go forward I mean, that's the best way I can describe it. What that does is it encourages you to take longer on the project. And I think with time, it allows, like I always like say, like you're slow cooking it. it. Brings out all the flavors. It makes the meat softer. It's just, it's a good idea to smoke. That's what you're doing with your story. I don't think it's something you should churn out as quick as fucking possible and just make another goddamn story in the world. Like, that's not what we need. You know, if you're gonna do something, do it right. Instead of forcing this shit out real quick, you can add these elements to it. And that's the beauty of working with time and not against time, you know? Because it's that aspect that we have generally is like, well, it's, there's not enough time, there's not enough time, and it's like just, Relax and work with it. You have the days of your life. You can add, use these aspects within the days. You can utilize your entire day working on this. That doesn't mean it's going to give you the best product. You have to use the right time in the right way. You know, because I mean, I was caught in that too. I thought like, oh, I got to work every fucking minute of my time on this book. No, you don't. You just, when you have the minutes, make it worthwhile make it make it meaningful 10 hours of you forcing something out is not as good as 15 minutes of your time that you set aside to really just put something there real quick something that's meaningful to you whether it's notes or it's some sort of i don't know like you want to write a quick story down or a character motivation or just Maybe draw something like that's much more worthwhile than sit here forcing with for hours. You know, you working against time here and you're working with it there. You know, work when inspiration hits. That's the most crucial thing. I mean, if that would be advice, that would be it for me. One of the other bits of advice is just, yeah, you have time and sure, time ticks away. But don't think of it that way. Just work with the time that you're given. In a sense of, you're in the middle of work, and all of a sudden an idea hits. Just go real quick, write it down on your phone, go back to work. It's okay, but you have it now. I mean, I have in my phone hundreds of notes. So there's so many, you know, like the the notebook section of 
app or whatever that's called. It's like a little, like a notebook. I have pages and pages and pages full of fucking notes because I'm at work or I'm doing something and I can't sit and like, well, hold on, let me get my typewriter real quick and I'll, I'll write this out. Like, no, you gotta just inspirational hit you. You might be listening to a podcast about something and then all of a sudden you're like, well, fuck, I gotta write that down. Maybe my character deals with that. I consider that divine inspiration, like that's meant to be as it's meant to be. And you have to, it's a practice. You have to devote yourself and put your mind in the right mode of action to become the vessel of this information from the other. You know, in many aspects it's very religious. And instead of me focusing on like the faith of Christianity and stuff like that, I'm finding my faith is within God and this book. So for me, that this is what I've noticed. It's like, you have to train your brain that it's okay that you, know, you don't have this inspiration at all times, but make it ready when it strikes you like lightning. And you're like, oh fuck, oh, that would be a great idea. I should, I should you know, and then write it down and have faith that it's, just, it's going to work in the way that it will work. Now, there's going to be a lot of time, I imagine, that, you know, it won't work for you, or it won't... You'll, you'll, you'll want that to happen, I'll say, and it just won't. You'll be sitting there, like, willing for it to come forth, because you're in front of your computer, or whatever it is that you write with, and you're just like, come on, I want this to happen, I'm ready, I'm available, I am open to this new thing. Come to me, from the imaginary. And... In some sense, it's the same as extending your hand out to an animal because you want to come to you and the animal doesn't want to. There's something in that exchange that you are doing that's somehow too inviting. Do you know what I mean? Why do we like cats so much? Because they're, you know, when you want them to come, they never do. Unless they're my cats, of course. They will always. <laughs> but... You just have to trust in it and have faith in whatever it is you're doing. Whether it's the animals around you, your job, your, the people you care about, or the work you're working on. So like just have this faith. Don't get discouraged by it and just be it. Because it'll be you once you allow it. You'll allow the door to be opened. You know, sometimes you'll sit in front of something you'll be like, okay, I want to work on this. All right? And this, this is how you can separate forcing or having divine inspiration. So if you're not getting that divine inspiration and you're just not feeling it, and you, okay, whatever, but you need to write. So you come over here and you sit down in front of your thing, your typewriter, your computer, your fucking notebook, and you want to, but you just kind of feel, I don't know, I have no idea. I don't know what to do, <laughs> you know, whatever happens to me, you're just not feeling it. There's a way to hook into it, then there's a way to go with it. So let's hook into it. So how do we hook into this like stream? Well, that's obviously the stream of consciousness. So the first thing I would suggest is just sit down and just start, it doesn't matter, write it out, write thoughts out, write instantly, it doesn't fucking matter, just write something. The man sat down a little bit too hard, his penis hurt. Oops, that was mean. Why did I say that? I have no idea. And, and you just keep, whatever, even if it's fucking ridiculous like that. Or it could be like he went for a walk, he wondered why he was there. It doesn't even matter anymore because his mind was already astray. What was it that she said to him that one time? Why did he feel the way he did? What hurt him so deeply? He barely knew the woman. See what I mean? It just make anything, it doesn't matter. And then you just do that as an exercise. And you read it back, and generally you're kind of like, what the fuck is I even talking about? I have no idea. That was weird. Personally, mine always get dirty. <laughs> it's, I've, I can easily go down roads and make it filthy. So you do that kind of stuff to warm it up. And then you never know what could inspire it along the way, because within that process, you might find a word, faith. Wait, what about my character's faith? I have an idea, and you see what I mean? And you just, whoa, I found something from this weird jargon I just threw out, and here I am again. But in that part, you still have to trust in the unknown. Just go forward. 
just keep venturing in and just say like, well, I don't know what's going to come and I don't know what to do. And then eventually you'll start writing and you'll be like, holy fuck, I'm, here he is, here she is, and here's our journey. Wow, there we go. We're off until you hit your first roadblock. And you always feel that you're at a crossroads when you hit those roadblocks. It's always just like, could I go this way? Should I go that way? What about this way? Should I change this? Should I do that? And for, and for me, it's always whatever your first thought was is what you should do. But just as a practice of exercise, whenever you come to a point with your character and you feel there's uh, there's possibilities, you're just like, oh, I could do this, I could do that, I could do this. I would stop myself, go over to a new document on your computer or get another piece of paper and just weigh your options. Well, if I do this and this could happen, we could connect this plot idea and maybe this character's motivation will be like this. But if I go this way, then blah, 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 and you just keep going. And then whatever one feels like, mm, yeah, this, this is it, like, I like that. That's the one. And don't doubt it and keep going. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if it's like, I don't know, like, just keep going. You know how many times I've fucking done that in my book? Where I came to a, a point and I, I was like, well, this feels good that if I do it this way, and then I start doing it that way, and I'm just like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what to do here. It doesn't matter. You chose this path. You have to commit. And sometimes you get 50 pages into that commitment, and it just doesn't work. You never found a way through. Okay, well, there's 50 pages of experience. Take those. Set them aside. Start over. You have to sometimes. Sometimes you just got to fucking start over. And just like, whoops, we went on the wrong road for a long way. It didn't work out. But sometimes you'll go down a long road and you'll find this little road that leads you back onto the main road. You're like, oh, thank God. We've, we kept going south and we figured it out. Like, it all connected. Other times it can connect, but the road's under construction, so you might have find another way through. It's like, well, shit, we can't. It's right there, but I can't get to that road. We're going to have to go around. And there's so many options that you can explore from that point. And at the end of the day, all you're doing is problem solving. problem solving and trying to at the same time give a compelling story and take seriously what this what the characters are going through because they're going through an experience that it's fucking horrible for them or fucking great for them and you need to take it as seriously as they're feeling it but I always find that it's it's a, it's a, an amazing feeling trying desperately to make something work like this because it's so incredibly hard. I mean, there are days that it's just... You, you have a, a fuck of a time trying to make just the littlest things come true. But the beautiful thing is, it's like it's your work, so you can kind of take as much time as you want. And maybe what you're doing doesn't fit your, your lore. Maybe your lore can change a little bit. Or maybe that can just be another perspective. You know, your character is like, well, they believe in this, but that goes against the faith of his country, and I've already established all this, and now I don't know what to do anymore. And you just think, okay, well, maybe maybe this is the denominational faith. Maybe that's why it's different. Like, oh, yeah, so now you can just do it. It's okay, it's denominational. He's a Protestant. Now I can, oh, then what, what What would the history be between these people and those people? And now you have a whole new avenue to explore. Go to history and, and start filling up your fucking goodie bag. I mean, at the end of the day, there is no problem too great that you can't solve. It's just, yeah, can't do that. It's just that you have to trust into it enough that you'll make sense of it. Because sometimes it feels legitimate why you had to stop at a certain point in the story and restart. For me, um, my book one, there, there came a part where they got through this massive magical desert, this shifting sands desert that in, in, it doesn't have the same shape in it everywhere you go. Like you could walk, some people could walk across that entire, you know, thousand mile desert in two days. Some people it takes 50 years, just everybody it's different. The desert shifts itself around. 
and then my characters got through it and then all of a sudden they went into the mountains and then there was this mountain scene that they were down in the depths of the world walking and trying to figure things out and I paused because they were coming on these dwarvish ruins and I bearded pick me for me and I decided I was like this is too much like Lord of the Rings and that's why I stopped it wasn't like it wasn't great but I just felt like they're gonna think I'm just copying Lord of the Rings so I can't go in the mountains I just can't do it like there's nothing wrong going in the mountains and maybe eventually I will but my first book my second act of them going like no that's just it's too much of a mirror and I, I just that was the only reason I stopped it there it was just felt it felt like I was copying Tolkien too much so I went my own way I said well fuck it let's let's have a different adventure then let's have this happen and I scrapped like 50 to 60 pages because I just thought oh well, there's no point it just feel it doesn't feel right because I just it, you know was one and I just let them read Lord of the Rings they'd have much greater time doing that than they would my book <clears throat> which has this been done that's not to say you can't comment on things or, or try it your way but I didn't feel right for me in my story I mean everybody is different I, I find myself to be so, I, like a, a nitpicker if I don't understand every aspect of something then I don't feel like I can write about it so that's why my fucking story has this deep lore where like we're pond like it doesn't probably ever really come up but we're sitting here pondering like okay like this country and how does their naval um, fleet work and what kind of ships do they use and and how strong is it and how many and how do they recruit the sailors and what are the trade lanes that they go through like how does the Navy work in conjunction with trade vessels and, and what kind of vessels are used for trade what kind of objects are they getting from these trades as opposed to this country and like how does this mirror real life society what era are we talking about like all that shit I'm just like well we got to figure this out because one of these days my character might get on a boat and take a journey real quick <laughs> And I want realism. We're, everyone's different. To me, like, every detail matters. And if you watch my Forgotten series, I'm sitting here talking about the goddamn gods as thoroughly as I can. But it hasn't even come up in book one. And I finished book two and it barely came up. So it's like, was that all wasted? No, it's there. It exists because one day it's going to matter. But I want it to be fleshed out before I get to that point where I'm sitting there making it up like oh I don't know like maybe God's told him to do this it's everyone's different that way you know? I can't help that I want it to be as vivid as humanly possible and feel more realistic than anything that's you know someone else could write if you can't feel like you're there then what's the point of going Okay. I think I can uh, leave it there and we'll go forward from this point. And I will work more on that video today and hopefully by next week. But then again, I don't know. I'm not really sure what could come from this. See if I can recruit Jacob to help me out on it and like, uh, add some of his own ideas and lore. But we shall see.